the medium into which thought can be transferred and how that action takes place, namely water. Water is the staff of life. From water, all life emerges. I am devoting my life to the study of water, to know again how to prepare a living water. Water can be destroyed by impurities that are present in it. When that takes place, the information transfer that is so vital to life is lost. We are a living crystal. The primary oscillator is the bony structure of our life. We manifest that vibration into a series of patterns in space. As we breathe, we draw this energy into our body, and as we <clears throat> exhale, the energy comes out with a series of patterns of that which is within. Christ said, I will be with you all days, even to the end of the world. Where is this Christ in each one of us? That, I believe, is in the blood stream. Because Christ is <clears throat> living within each one of us. The dynamic living Christ is our blood stream. Because the blood as it pumps through the heart into the veins spins, creates a magnetic field and radiates in space. This field now <clears throat> interacts with the outer structure of our body, induces a magnetic moment, which are called natuses in space. I have been able to photograph these with the Mark IV Delaware Thought Photography Camera. Pictures of that are in this book on thought photography. The pricing of all of the equipment is in our Psychic Research newsletter. One copy is free to all who are here. I spoke yesterday <clears throat> on records are written in bone. This record is the imprinting in the bony structure of the patterns of life. The, this part is static. It is the building block that we build our life form around. The dynamic aspects of life is the blood stream. Yes. So breath is the vital expression of the life-giving force for the spiritual aspects of our body. Man is a duality. As above, so below. The linking of the upper triad with the lower quaternary brings the total man into being. There are seven oscillators of vibration that the body radiates from our body. They have different rates of vibration and each oscillator or chakra emits a distinct Home. One can stimulate the individual chakras with a tone generator. You have now these wonderful synthesizers. You place your hand on a drum, a stretched drum, and <coughs> rotate a synthesizer.
synthesizer for each note as you go, and you will suddenly feel a vibration in different parts of your fingers. When you do that, that will act directly on various organs in the body and can stimulate not only organ, but the chakras. In place of a synthesizer, I use a crystal. The primary actuator of the chakras is love. Love is that force coming from God himself which coheres matter. The principle of cohesion is love does not differentiate but it coheres. When one loves in a harmless, non-differentiating way, one actuates the chakras of the body of an individual. When that is done, <clears throat> you manifest from that actuation the Christ that is within you. So when I love you, I see the Christ that is within each one of us. And then we become one in him. This feeling transcends all races, all creeds. We become one with Christ. This has taken me a lifetime to learn and share these statements with you. I have been trained from childhood as a scientist. To be a scientist is to observe and measure. The concept of love is little understood by scientists because it is the reverse of science where you discriminate, you look for precise detail, you record, mathematically evolve, and theorize into relationship between cause and effect. One never sees the whole in a scientific approach. In my research, I have reversed the scientific procedure. Before I go into the laboratory, I pray to God to open my eyes and mind to see the truth. I then go into the laboratory and play as a child. Because in playing, I allow my intuition, the love of God, to act through my body, I become a channel. Once I have put an experiment together that is meaningful and substantial, I turn that faculty off and become now a rational scientist. The skill comes in knowing how to work in balance with what we call intuition and precipitation of that intuition into a rational, technical, scientific <coughs> approach. When I started the laboratory two years ago now, I prayed each day, dear God, give me a clear picture of what I should study and put my technical and scientific skills towards. God works in simple language. Finally, one word came through, study work. I've been doing that ever since. This morning I show what we have accomplished and what we have learned on what. How we can transfer the energy of thought 
implanted into a crystal into water. Uh, we now can start the process of understanding what goes on in the bloodstream. How we can learn to pray in the laboratory. I have been able with prayer and meditation to form images through the microscope. These have come about from crystals dissolved in water and as they precipitate from solution I enter that water and the crystals orient and organize in images instead of the normal crystallographic forms. This work was done in 1904 by Dr. Charles W. Littlefield in Seattle, Washington. He published a book titled The Beginning and the Way of Life. I have a copy of this and there he too shows how mind can interact with matter and bring a form into being of matter. I will be making these pictures available for sale if people are interested in buying them. I made them in 1960 to 62 and I had nobody to share them with because who would know what I was saying especially in my own laboratories. I have gone deeper and studied the materials that are in our human brain, cholesterol esters. Now, I believe that this is the information carrier in the brain. These materials are called liquid crystals. <laughs> the liquid crystals are exceedingly sensitive to weak electric fields, thermal changes, and electrostatic fields. I pioneered in IBM on the concept of using liquid crystals in watches, in display systems, as flat panel television screens. The origin of this idea came from a wonderful friend I have here in Germany, Dr. Wilhelm Stürmer in Berlin, Germany. He was playing with <coughs> making pictures with liquid crystals <coughs> under the microscope Monday, I go to visit with him, and we will talk for many hours together. This work comes again from Germany, the knowledge of liquid crystals. It started in 1899 with the work of Otto Lehmann. He published a book, which I have a copy of, on Physica Cristallum, the knowledge of the life process. We have yet to use his knowledge properly because he too, Dr. Lehman, spoke of the importance of not only looking at these things scientifically, but one must let the spirit move within one to be guided to know how to think and to work with these. In this generation, we must train young people to work with not only the mind, the rational mind, but open to the spirit develop in them the capacity to love. To love demands first knowledge. From knowledge, as you see on the board, you unfold the form.
that is within you. You develop in the image, and from that comes life. Once we do that, we develop the teacher. Then we develop the capacity to pass on our knowledge to our fellow men. We are all to do this. It makes no difference whether you are a housewife, gardener, a street sweeper, or a scientist or a theologian. My teacher in life has been my children. They have opened the cracks in my psyche, have shown me where I am doing improper thinking, but above all, gave me the opportunity of unconditional love. A child strikes right to the heart of what they see in you. That is why Christ said, suffer little children to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because heaven is within you, you or me. What is heaven? Heaven is the bringing together of all of our faculties, the linking of the body, the mind, and the spirit. And when this link forms, this triad, a third power comes in, which is God, and that is love. It coheres all of our faculties, and we act then as one being. We become one with ourselves. So, this is the knowledge of our senses. When we expand that knowledge with love, that knowledge is open and it goes from concrete to infinite. That takes place. We must then serve with that knowledge. And the linking of these triad evokes a force within us that is the God within or God. This is a crystal. This is a liquid crystal. This crystal now is identical to water. That is why from water came all life. The water molecule is a tetrahedron. This is a this tetrahedron shape allows for information store of the mind of God. The knowledge I share now with you is in no books. It is a part of a lifetime of thinking and assembly of all patterns of information. When we form a geometric pattern like this, we can then store the information of our soul working through matter. Water can be in a pure form. It has then no order to it. It can be then structured, forms a liquid crystal by thought. A key element to add to water is silica, SiO2. What, what that does, please carefully now listen, it becomes a nucleating site, the sil silicon dioxide, for the water molecules to tie around so they form a structure in space. 
Can you all understand me here on this now? All right, could you translate? I'm giving you now the core information. Silica is a nucleating material for the water molecule. This is a water molecule to link to and orient. When that water molecule links and orients, it forms a structure. This structure, the linking of these water molecules to the silica, is very sensitive to the energy of thought or feeling. It forms structures in water like magnetic recording on tape. I have been able to capture these forms on film. They are the pre-form, the energetic pre-form on which now matter consolidates. And from this comes the patterns of nature that we call the handiwork of God. As a man thinketh, so he is. And energy follows thought. This energy now can form in space and build the pre-form on which matter comes into being. This is the power that you and I have been given by God to bring into being that which did not exist before. When one does that, one livens an object one focuses on. That is not see the value, the good, the integrity in a person. I am releasing a power from me into you. It goes into the bloodstream of your body, orients, and puts life into your body. This is the whole teaching. Because when you give life, the life energy to a person, they can take then that energy and transmute it into the chemical, the structure that they need for their life. We speak of light in a quantum mechanical way. We speak of light being composed of packets of energy. V e is equal to each new square. E is equal to H new, new square. It's the expression of the quantum of life. Simplified light does lift here, come in line paqueta. And these are paqueta, canon aggregarian on amplifier. <laughs> yes. Could you please put the formal on the blackboard? But yeah, the formal. Be 
my life. I hope and pray that we as scientists can sit down and work in harmony to study love and not talk about sex. <laughs> sex is the final expression of a love between a man and a woman to bring new life into being. There is much more to love than sex. Love is the food that God gives us to keep life functioning within our body. I learned this from the study I made with plants. Tomorrow I will show you what one can do to a single leaf which one removes from a plant but projects love to it. You, each one of you, can sustain a leaf by projecting love to it through your hands. Put the leaf aside, cut another leaf and put it on a piece of paper and that leaf that you have projected love will remain green and vital. Photograph, and I have sustained this way a leaf for two months. The normal action of a leaf cut from its stem is that the water leaves dehydrates and the leaf shrivels and dries up. When you send love to the leaf, you structure the water in the leaf and it does not evaporate. I've done this experiment with children in the classes I give in San Jose. And this is how I teach children 10 to 12 years of age, what love is. They can remove a leaf and know it will die. But when they project love, they sustain the leaf. We have then gone from leaf to seed. We then take a handful of seeds, radishes, tomatoes, we put them in the palm of our hand, put the other hand over, and start to breathe the thought of growth, beauty, springing out with full blossom. And then we plant those seeds in a little pot. Then we take another set of seeds and pick them up with a spoon. We don't touch them. We put them in a similar pot and water them each day the same. What happens? The plant that we, seeds that we put in our hand, project, come out two, three days ahead of time. The other seeds <coughs> are shriveled and barely grown. All of you can do this. This is the first grade in teaching all of us to be healers. We are all healers. To heal is to give love and to help another person through their difficulties to become at one with themselves. We have too often given up the healing of our own body. The best way I find to heal my own body is to love it. And one of the nicest ways of doing that is to have another person massage your body. This wonderful man here worked on me last night. My body was tired. And he put these oils, these homeopathic materials, on my body and started to rub. I became one with him. And my body became whole again, and I feel wonderful today. Thank you. In Thanksgiving, I put on necktie and shirt and dressed up for all of you today. <laughs> now, I will show you some experiments.
This is a picture of a water molecule taken with the Delaware Thought Photography Camera. The image I got onto film was the angle in the esophagus inflammation. It is a primordial atom. There's a series of oscillators spinning. There are a series of bands in here. This was captured with the camera, which I tuned with mine, which I set the vibrational rate for water. Then I charge the water with love, and out comes these patterns. I then study these little specks that you see here and here and over here and here with the microscope. And in the microscope at 600 diameter magnification, these areas are composed of high energy particles moving in space. They are exactly like what one sees in a cyclotron or these big atom smashers. I'm getting technical. <laughs> we take a part of like this and we get a picture like this. Now, a systematic oscillation of a force. Another part of this uh, same picture, oscillating force here, and from that, another charge moves at right angles. There is no precedent in published literature on this time. The camera is calibrated with copper sulfate. And this is the energy coming from copper sulfate. And here are additional patterns. That have gotten from water. Von Wasser. When it is charged. Mit Aufladung. You see here a curved path. Hier eine Kurvenlinie. Exactly as one finds in the Wilson cloud chamber. Genauso wie in der Wilson Wolkenkammer. Ich weiß nicht, wie man das nennt. You can all look at this afterwards. Now we go. I have a question for the first Please. picture. I didn't get quite get it. Could you put it on back on the first one? Sure. The one you had baked on the wall. Oh, uh, that is a 2x. This is a picture of the actual plate, full size of the three and a half by four glass plate. This is a big white. So this is the pattern of the water molecule, in other words, the whole structure. If you look up here, there's another one here, and you can see the, the striations. There's another pattern here and here. There are these vibrations that are out of focus. The tuning of this takes hours to bring alignment to the lenses and the like. And so what I feel this is are stray radiations. See, what we are doing is converting sound into light here. The light is not a visible light, but it's a ultraviolet type radiation. This is the only camera right now in the world. Uh, it was designed by George Delavar in the late 30s. Only he and Corte could operate this camera. When I read the book, New Worlds Beyond the Atom, a voice spoke within me and said, you can operate this camera. I went to England and was able to operate the camera. It became possible for me to get the camera and it was sent from England to the United States but practically a miracle. It is in my laboratory now to share with you. If anyone wishes to work with this camera, you can come and we can work together. I'm working now to build a new camera with a video attachment so we can get a dynamic picture of these energy fields that emanate from matter. This is not Aura. This is the pre-form 
of matter. This is the dynamic crystal of the living life force, which coheres and keeps the physical body in form. This ties in with the work of homeopathy. Homeopathy is a precise knowledge once it is clearly understood. Because in homeopathy, you separate the essence, the preform, from matter itself. And once that essence is free, it then can act on matter and serve what it was designed to do. All nature reflects man. In the plant kingdom, the flower represents the essence of the feeling body of man. You have a dictionary in form of the qualities that make man what he or she is. What we have been lacking in homeopathy is quantitative measurement of this etheric or pre-form. There are two elements now to homeopathy. One, the thought of the operator who prepares the homeopathic remedy, and two, the intrinsic vibration that is inherent in that remedy which can serve to bring man back to form. The thought of man is, I will use now my own thought of love, well-being, put into a crystal, then water with 0.01% silica is spun around this crystal ten times. That means that I take 100 cc's of water, D, the reverse osmosis water, pass it around the crystal that I have programmed with love, and I will show you now the effect that takes place. The above is a control. In other words, there is this point is this 0.01% silicic acid in the water. This is using an optical microscope now. Polar, uh, I'm sorry, phase contrast polarized light, 640 diameter magnification. The upper picture shows the normal evaporation to solid of the silica in the water. It is gel-like without structure. The bottom is the water that has been structured by passing the water around the crystal, drawing the pattern from me into the water, and notice the change in the crystallization of the silica. Yeah. What I've done is bring, with love, order and balance into something now that is disordered. I have done this many, many times. I can repeat what you see here. The power of love is to bring order out of chaos. Here is chaos. Here is chaos. Here is order. Is the same happens to you in your body. Now we will go a little bit deeper. It's a bit deeper. Uh, yeah. Could you explain why you use the crystal? Pardon me? Could you explain why you use this crystal instead of uh, putting in your mind power? I can't hear you. Uh, she's asking about you. teaching to 
vibration into a crystal with mine. I can take this crystal, once I put a vibration into it, put it away for months, and I will get the same pattern that you see here when I put it into the apparatus. So it is a memory storage device. Yeah, that would be the next computer then built out of crystal. <coughs> that is correct. These are, you're looking at the start of the next computers. We will have devices like this which we can put our thought forms into, put them in devices and play back these thoughts onto a video screen. Here is the start. I have explored now each of the 12 tissue salts. Each one, when I treat it with the crystal, takes on a unique, distinct pattern from the original. Is there any questions now on this? By your testing, did you try to, after a while, when you put in the information into the crystal and you checked, put more information in, we'll and, you, and you checked it, does it change on its own sometimes? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that means by your salt pattern you're giving in continuously? Well, because I'm linked to that crystal and the variation in pattern of my thought, is, the crystal is dynamic. It is not static. Okay, so then what you're actually creating here is a second identity of you. That's right. That is correct. So then there is a danger in it because you now have to control the second identity otherwise it can work on its own. No, no, no. I'm aware at all times of what is here. The moment there would be interference, I'd immediately shut it off. Okay. So that but means what I say. I put many, many years of meticulous, careful study on breath control, self-development, I would have to spend a month with you in this type of lecturing just to begin laying the ground. But I have worked carefully and hard, not in scattered ways, to build a coherent bit of thinking. I will show now, this young lady back here spoke on, could I act on the water directly? The answer is yes. That was done in 1980, March the 4th. It was witnessed by this man here. Now, what I did was to take a micro capillary tube, one tenth millimeter in thickness, and pull a drop of water in by pure capillary action. So I took this little tube, which was this I touched it to pure distilled water. There was no impurities in the water, it was just distilled. And I pulled this little tiny drop into the capillary and ran the near infrared spectra of that water. From 1,000, from one micron to 2.5. Four microns. And this is called a spectra, this one at 1450. There's another one at 1800. And there is a series of peaks here at 21 and 2300. I took this capillary out now and put it between my thumb and forefinger just like this. Then and out three times. Projected only the thought of love. This is what happened.
see now this new band here. Another band here. I'm able to match these bands to the OH stretch. In other words, the bonding between hydrogen and the oxygen. So this ties in to hydrogen bonding of the water molecule itself. I'm getting closer and closer to understanding of this total process of healing. This took one year of work. But you see, I used a micro capillary and I aligned it in exactly position under the microscope and worked within a short period of time. It was about one hour. The temperature was the same. All conditions were held the same. I find very important the cycles of moon. When you work on the low lunar cycle, one gets no effect. The ascending where the moon is developing is the strongest. I'm afraid now I must bring in astrology, esoteric astrology, into this study where I must go to her then. <laughs> one is dealing with very sensitive forces. Excuse me, may I ask one question? What no. This, what, this lady, <laughs> First. no. what this lady said about the direction, I think uh, it's very interesting. Did you make any experiment regarding the directions in which it Years and years. Even more so, if a person has a toothache, it knocks out all experimentation. If a person comes in depressed, having a fight with their wife or another friend, forget it. I send them home. I've had to know how to use crystals to isolate experiments, and I will carefully share this with you this afternoon to show I was able to get this type of data, and I'm happy to share this with you because I've had to struggle for many years in getting a result and suddenly it's gone again. One can develop the equivalent of what we call a Faraday cage with crystals. And we do that this afternoon and we will show it with dowsing rods here. So is it the same reason that some computer guys say that they're data bank gets empty suddenly. That's right. So that's the same same thing. principle. Okay. Because they call it normally onto several spirits, you know, no, no, no. Or so it's their own soul pattern. Mm -hmm. Which all empty the internal being. Yes. Okay. See, we must learn to be coherent if we are to do this work. And that means we must not be careful. We're wet, ready and willing to experience without judgment and then process that experience with our rational mind. If we plan the experiment beforehand, we are creating nonsense. Because all that becomes then is a reflection of our thought and is not stating reality. It has taken many, many careful years to make this statement to you. From discipline, I have learned to develop no thought. Otherwise, I could not do these work. That comes about by taking the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, linking them together in the middle, and walking a balanced median path. We do that with breath. We breathe through the left nostril and exhale through the right nostril. We breathe through the right nostril and exhale through the left nostril. We do it first by putting one's finger here. Drawing the breath in, reversing it and letting the breath out through the opposite side, 
we can now start a careful, systematic study of homeopathic remedies, the effect of light, the effect of magnetic field, or the atmospheres that surround it. This can, I can quantitate this into a numerical value of differentiation between a ketolite and a xenolite against this control. When we structure this water, we find that it is resistant now to boiling, to treating with a magnetic field. It is a permanently changed water. Here we apply a demagnetizing field with a bulk magnetic eraser, and one sees that there is no effect to this water that we have structured. We have then the water magnetized and see here this no effect. Yeah, this is control. This is the water that we have structured and boiled. We come back to this. To the original control sample and we get the same results again. This is a severely compressed spectrum. If I were to open this up, this would go from one end of the chart to the other. This is a whole new structure. I have come now, full circle, to speaking as a terribly to you, to showing you in truth, when man creates a thought, implants it into a crystal, he can transfer that thought into water, and water then retains this information. On this base, I am building now a whole new technology of service. I hope to make insecticides without harm, to make the health-giving vital water we need again to keep us vital, growing, and sustained. We're starting now agricultural experimentation with a comparison of this water versus this water. Time will tell what the results are. Yeah. Shall I repeat this? No, no. I understood. You should say it to each other. Now, what we will do is you take the crystal in your hand now, draw your breath in, close your eyes, create an image of your mother, and release the image into the crystal with your breath. Now, breathe in again. Go through the crystal now and contact your mother and ask her, does she want to live? Now give me the answer. Yeah, here it comes. All right, now what is the answer? Are you willing now to accept the love from all of us who are here to help you to live? All right, what is the answer? So that she may 
we release herself from anger. To open her heart to you again. this wonderful love from her brother let us all now breathe together look at the crystal and release your breath into the crystal Now, let us breathe through the crystal and visualize the woman that is needing this help. And send her love and well-being. Breathe in. And out slowly, three times, in, and out, ein, and out. Peace be to you, my dear. And may the love of God now enter your heart and release you from all anxiety, sadness, anger, and distress. Öffne dein Herz und lasse allen Ärger, alle Traurigkeit und allen Stress heraus. We give you our love. Wir geben dir unsere Liebe. Peace be to you. Friede sei mit dir. Here comes the chain. Feel the vibration now. There's a change in her. Now describe what you are seeing, my dear, here. In your mind. Can you see her now? Yes, I'm sensing her opening up. Right. And the experience is here. You can find it as well. There is the order. There is an odor connected with this. Sir, yeah, almost like tobacco. Now, the job is done. Once you get that odor, you've made contact. Now, all draw in our breath. And release from the crystal with the outgoing breath. It's done. Who are 
a total communication between the forces that are in the heavens and that which is here on the earth plane. Man was at peace and at balance many times in his earthly existence. When man grasped the power and held it to himself, warfare, destruction came into being. There is much you have here in Germany to be proud of. God has blessed you with a wonderful, provident land, beautiful trees, and a beautiful balance between living and the activities of nature. Please thank him each day for the gifts he has given you. Now I'd like you to read rule one, two, and three. Then you know you. Yeah, you don't have any English, because I don't understand the other. You do not. Uh, yeah. Shall I read in English? Yes. Alright, then I will read slowly in English. <laughs> <laughs> Rule one. <clears throat> Enter thy brother's heart and see his woe. Then speak. Let the words spoken convey to him the potent force he needs to loose his chains. Yet, loose them not thyself. Thine is the work to speak with understanding. The force received by him will aid him in his work. Look how beautiful these words are put together. This is a whole treatise on healing. Enter thy brother's heart and see his woe. Then speak. You speak from the heart, not from the mind. When you enter through the heart, you are working in and through love. We always start with the heart. Now we go to the mind. Rule two, enter thy brother's mind <clears throat> and read his thoughts, but only when thy thoughts are pure. Then think, let the thoughts thus created enter thy brother's mind and blend with his. Yet keep the fact thyself, for none have the right to sway a brother's mind. The only right there is will make him say, he loves, he standeth by, he knows. He thinks with me, and I am strong to do the right. Learn thus to speak, learn thus to think. When I worked <clears throat> with this man yesterday who had this tumor in his brain, I did these words with him. I loved him, I stood by him, I experienced his suffering, I became one with him. Now the third rule. Blend with thy brother's soul and know him as he is. Only upon the plane of soul can this be done. Elsewhere, the blending feeds the fuel of his lower life. Then focus on the plan. Then he will see the part that he and you and all men play. Thus will he enter into life and know the work accomplished. When I was a child of six, I was dying of double lobar pneumonia. 
I received the last sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church and the love of my mother and father and the doctor was there with me who said there is nothing more I can do for this child. I separated from my body and saw my physical body from a distance. I saw my parent, my priest, and the doctor beside me, and I kept moving further and further away <clears throat> from this body that I was observing. As I looked away from my body, I saw a beautiful light in a tunnel. I was drawn to that light. It was a tremendous sense of peace, of joy. In one breath, I was back in my body. The next day, I was up <clears throat> and running around without any sign of disease. The first thing I remember, I asked my parents, <clears throat> why am I alive? Nobody could give me the answer. I was drawn then to go to church. I would serve the 5.30 Mass in the morning. Every morning I would walk. It was one and a half miles in San Francisco. Serve the Mass and after Mass, talk to God as I am now talking to you. The message was, why am I alive? And what am I to do with my life now? That went on for four years, from six until I was 11 years old, with no answer to the prayer. Until one day, when I repeated that question for the thousandth Time, a voice spoke within me and said, You are to be a chemist. You will be a phosphor chemist and will publish a book on luminescence. You will then build your own corporation and do fundamental research in rare earth phosphors. I accepted these words as true and proceeded to borrow one dollar from my grandmother and started a, for a chemistry set and started to become a chemist. <coughs> I made many explosions and terrible mistakes. <laughs> I was kicked out of the house and my father helped me to build a laboratory in the backyard. In two years, I had a three-room laboratory, complete with microscope, white rats, wet chemical laboratory, and dark room to work in. I proceeded to make the phosphors that I saw for fluorescent lamps. I said there will be light in a tubular form with electrodes on the end. When you apply power to them, they will produce a cold light. And then we will go to making paint a source of light, a cold light. Instead of point sources of light, the paint will, on an electronic device, emit light from each one of the crystals. And then I saw television, pictures on flat screens. I tried to bring all of these into being. You can imagine the confusion in trying to do precise phosphor chemistry with no technical knowledge. My strength came from my mass and communion in the morning. I would go then to the Mechanics Institute and go through the books in the Berichte de Chemistry Gesellschaft, the Journal of Chemical Physics, the Physicalische Review, and trans
translate the German articles on luminescence into English. I have many hundreds of articles translated, books like this. I was confused. Because what the people who wrote was not the whole truthful information. I pray again, dear Lord, give me understanding of how to reason through this information. I need now a teacher. By this time I was 21 years old. There was no one in either high school or college that I could go to for knowledge. I then met Dr. Pringsheim at the University of California. And like I told you yesterday, he trained me for two years. And this is a book we published together. Und das ist das Buch, das wir zusammen veröffentlicht haben. You will be a phosphor chemist who will publish a book on luminescence. Also, I then formed Vogel Luminescence Corporation and built about 200 formulas of all types of fluorescent and phosphorescent material. I made fluorescent bulletin paints, fluorescent wall coverings. And we had in the room a fluorescing room with black light activating the paints. It was the most wonderful, pleasant type of illumination. I sold business and joined IBM in 1957. 1961, I made the europium tungstate and yttrium vanadate europium, the red component for color television and fluorescent lamps. That completed the cycle from the age of 11. So what I am trying to share now with you, whatever you ask for in prayer, persist, and the prayer will come true. And that is why I'm speaking now to you. Now we go to working with crystals. We work first with natural crystals. What is the value of a natural crystal? All crystals of natural origin will link or store the vibration you release with mind in thought. It is not necessary to soak crystals in salt water exposed to light, clear or purified them. The reality is the intention you have in what you are working with or doing with the crystal. Also, <clears throat> to clear the crystal, whether natural or faceted or cut by me, one holds in this way and holds the other hand in opposition, draws breath in and pulse. So again, the crystal now is clear. As long as you don't breathe, you don't put a charge in the crystal. As I'm holding now, I draw my breath in, watch. And let the breath out again. Now the field in my body fills the crystal. Once the space in the crystal is occupied by you, no other vibration can come in without your permission. I learned this from the plant work. I transposed this to the crystal work. Many people have asked questions. When I fill with thought, 
the space in this crystal is an extension of myself here. The first thing we can learn then with the crystal is to study oneself. Man, know thyself. One does this by watching, holding the crystal in one's hand this way. Right hand and left hand, thumbs together. You look into this space. One of the I will go in now. I draw the breath in. Focus on the third eye. And let the breath out suddenly into the crystal with my eyes closed. Watch what happens to my body when I do this. My feet are solid on the ground. Draw the breath in. Close my eyes. I, I see the crystal face sharp and clear in front of my vision. I now let the breath out. My whole breath is changing. Notice the positioning of the crystal now to a new focal point. Now the oscillation takes place. My ears are ringing now with a distinct tone. And I can move now at will any place I wish to go. If you'll raise your hands now, I will go through the crystal and touch each one of your hands. Now I will send love. And let us all now embrace one another in thought. In Gedanken umarmen wir jetzt einander. Peace be to you. Frieden sei mit Ihnen. Now let us draw one's breath again back. Close one hands and put the hands down. How many could feel the energy moving from the crystal? How does it feel? Right. When I did this, I could see your etheric body. I no longer see physical body. I see an old void of energy. Each one of you vibrated like an egg with distinct color, and I can hear them be young. One can do this with a crystal. One can link to one's friend in love, communicate on a the third plane, come back into your body and record your results. One can also communicate with one's angel, guardian angel, one's own teacher on many planes, and those friends we have in space. Right. right. I yeah. changed frequency. It would short pulses like this first, then suddenly I expanded it. Whatever is convenient for you. 
In the Roman Catholic Church now, I am teaching nuns to use this in their convents, and the priests are using these crystals in giving retreats. You see, it is a means of consolidating your energy, and from this point, you expand it out. <laughs> oh, sure. All I did is just link. Once I remove the charge from here, then you will feel me out at the same time. That's why you're feeling it. What? As I rotate around, you will have different force to it. I could put this in a room, and I will be here from that moment on. And I could be back in America. Just focus on the crystal, one breath, and it's gone. You all can do this. Now, the practical value. You, when you leave your house, can put yourself into a crystal. Having this in the room, you can carry on your housework wherever you are. You are attached to the crystal like an automatic sentry. The moment there is danger, you will feel it. And in the in einem Gefahr moment, that will be sure. Also, you can quiet a child down with us. Außerdem kann man ein Kind damit beruhigen. Because they will be attracted to this vibration. And as you radiate from here, they will reach over and they will touch it. This will be a source of life energy, your love, that you can feed a child. You can do this also for animals and also adults. Yeah. So would it possible um, I have my child somewhere else? <coughs> yes. Hold it in your hand this way, charge it as I did, then send it to him. And he will feel you and you will feel him. Oh, uh, is she meant to have a child? Oh, yes. They, come next. they can take small ones. And they wear it. Now, for wearing, the best crystal is a Berkmer diamond. And children seem to attend to Always when she goes over and says that her son is taking one in order to sit You see? Exactly what I was saying a minute ago. Because he can feel you in the crystal. You will have then no fear of being alone. Now, the next step, who's wearing a crystal around their neck? Yeah. Right here. This is we can see now whether a crystal is good for one or not so good. So. Now, what this means, this one is too far down. The best protection is in the witness area. This is the correct position. One can measure now whether a crystal is proper for one or not by reflexology. You resist, and I push. Oh, no, resist. Push, resist, more. I use one finger, not ah. So, no, that's a normal resistance. Take your finger here, put it on here, and say, is this good for me to wear here? Focus your mind on it, and I will test. Resist. Weak. Try it again. 
Try once more. Feel the weakness. Now, if you will take this off, I will show you. When we suffer emotion, anger or sadness, it imprints into the crystal. As we take bath to clear our body from the activities of the day, so we must also clear crystal each day. So when you get up in the morning, you take crystal in your hand this way, put your other hand opposite, so you form this, just take a breath in, let your breath out, and you clear it. Now put it out. You can do this to each object you wear. Especially arrows, rings that have been given from another person are imprinted with your thoughts. If a person dies with a ring on their finger and you take it off and give it to another person, the patterns of death are imprinted in that ring. One then has depression in one's body. When you clear the ring, as I now show, there will be no further Arm out. One finger, put it here. Focus on it. Resist. Or feel strength in it. Whole body now is strong. See, you have imprinted in here the vibration and it weakens you. Now you're strong. Now, let us try the crystal in this direction. Try it here. Focus on it. Put your arm out. And resist. Weak. Try it again. Weak. Now, reverse direction. Focus on it. Strong. Strong. The position of the crystal will make your body weak or strong. You cross that. The tipper is facing up. The right direction. The crystal must be facing up.
downward direction as a therapy, as a means for pumping out. Because what? There, there are two things. There's a dualism to everything connected with crystals. In all the published literature, they have neglected this. Number one, the intrinsic property of the crystal. The crystallographic form, the chemical composition, and the locale where the crystal is grown. That is a fundamental property of the crystal. Form, geometry, affects the body form. The chemical composition links to the chemistry of the body. And the locale affects the astrology of the crystal. One side. The other side is the mind of a person, their thought, their intention in penetrating and working with the crystal. You can do it for good or service, or you can do harm. But the beautiful thing is, with your mind, one thought, one pulse, anything that is stored in the crystal can be erased. Now I will show you something surprising. Yes, Only one termination, downward direction, made you weak. Yes. Now I'm going to mentally put another termination on this side. Hold it here, focus on it. Now I've created with my mind a doubly terminated crystal. I put into this crystal the thought that it makes no difference now whether it's up or down. Can you come up here for a minute? Put your fingers on the crystal. And you'll feel the vibration that's going on. Feel it? It's a pulsation just on it. That is a program I put in. Now, keep your fingers on it. Now, when I draw my breath away, that vibration will go. Why? See, it's going down now. It's fading almost to the Put my breath out. Now she comes back. Breath controls input and Output. 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 Strong, reverse it. I don't know what direction it is now. Strong, try it again. Reverse. Yeah. Yeah. See? Now you can use this in any direction. Now give me another crystal. There. I'm not going to touch you. Take this now. Focus on it. That's nice. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to show that in reality. Reverse Please, have I taught you something important? The power of mind. How could I prove it that it is not my own expectation? I do it in two ways. Number one, why don't you stand up? I work on the back of the person. I work back here. So you don't know whether it's up or down. I then, thank you, do the next step. I blindfold both myself and the person. 
there is an intrinsic property that a crystal has, but through mind, you can nullify or build whatever you want. This is the fundamental to all utilization of stones. Be they gems, natural crystals, or therapeutic stones. Bhattacharya has written gem therapy. There have been many dozens of books written quoting from different authorities. The reality is the thought that you apply to the crystal. If you accept what you read, that a crystal will be harmful, that thought enters the crystal and it does you harm. There are, though, some fundamental crystals which weaken a body. All black stones weaken. Isn't that also programming? <laughs> no, I will give you technical reason. The reason for blackness is absorbing all radiation. Yeah? yeah? But by what you said before, you should be able to change that. Coming, that was my next statement. <laughs> you can change that property in that stone so it will not weaken. But when you do that, you neutralize any property that stone has on you. It becomes just an empty stone. But the like an acid <coughs> and a base, you mix together, they form a salt. The same with a stone. If you neutralize its intrinsic properties, you then do not get the benefit from the stone. Well, black means that you are absorbing all light. So no light can come out from the color. It is all being absorbed. And when there is darkness, there is no light. And of course, it absorbs light. There is much light. Only there is no, it's broken up. It is lost. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they want to keep all this energy within <coughs> themselves. <laughs> Two different cultures, and you're in one culture, and another culture is in the crystal, you'll get only the culture that you're attached to. Yeah? The whole principle in extracting information from a crystal is resonance, which means that you breathe in and you breathe out, and as soon as you feel you know, this vibration that you felt, you go into the vibration and your mind begins to see images. First, the big up. <laughs> now, Take a deep breath. 
Close your eyes. And let your breath out into the crystal. Now open your eyes. And as I go in to her, you can look with your eyes closed to the crystal now, and we will see together. First, let us pray. Dear God, let me be an instrument now of service to this lady. To help her with her pain. So that she will operate from this moment on free from pain and discomfort. So that she from now on without pain can. Right. Jumping out. It was locking. Then 
and I get pull up and split. Yeah, that's small. Yeah. I just fly under the pressure. Now, let us take a break. Mm -hmm. Give me a moment to rest. You deserve one. Thank you. I have these exercises in this crystal knowledge workbook. I've given here also basic information. And some of the exercises of Dr. Nikola Tesla. It's the start of a full book that I will have before the end of the year. I hate to write. I like to do, create, but then to have to go back and write has been a big chore. 1970, 1987, I must start writing. And people will not see me for a while. <laughs> now, to charge body, one does it by not the natural breathing. You take over control of your body with your breath. You sit up straight, buckle our legs, put our hands here in front of us. Now, I will breathe once a cycle. You breathe in to the count of seven and hold for three and you go out in the count of seven. Now watch. I'll breathe in. Close one's hand. Die Hände zusammenballen. Rotate. Und rotieren. And bring it out. Und ausatmen. Auch auf sieben. Halten auf drei. Hold. Reverse hands. Halten. Breathe in. Einatmen. Indwelling breath, you close eyes. The outgoing breath, you open eyes. So you're drawing in breath and you're releasing the tension and fatigue. So the indwelling breath, you visualize light. And the peak of the breath, you see light. The outgoing breath, you release tension temperature, and fatigue. Breathe in. Now we breathe in. To the count of 12. So, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hold. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, hold, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Just let your body swing and rotate to the forces that are within you. <coughs> Bring in a cool breeze as I will project to you. It will be like the wind. Temperature will get cooler. Temperature. Uh, fade. That's good now. Yeah. Open your eyes. Now, 
we can, with a small crystal like this, stop the forces from underground ley lines. You can stop unwanted radiation from power lines. You can stop unwanted vibrations from radio transmitting stations. I've done this in my own house. I've done my best to test this. We're going to see now if there is any ley line in this area here. Both this like this. At the ley lines have a direction to them. And when you put it at the base of a ley line, so a ley line is a moving body of water. Or understood. 
you then have to take these ideas and carry them on and see how much more they apply. Yes. Sorry, I'm a saver, you know. Huh? I'm a saver. I try to make it more easy. So if I say these, see these two ley lines, right. what would happen if I would, on the crossing of them, put only one crystal instead of putting on each end you put one? put one crystal here, watch. You put an area like this that has a certain radius of influence, but it does not extinguish that. Mm -hmm. Now, I will show this to you in a minute. We will look for a crossing ley line because we've got two fields that are crossing here. It's crossing about where you are right now. Uh, when, uh, now we'll go ahead and experiment. I'll show you. Um, to the side of this experiment. Let me just take my own glass. <laughs> well, you can look around and we'll see now. It's good. What I find with a simple angle rod, you see the angle what? Of deviation of these two rods. See how it matches the cups that are on the floor? Can you see that? Now, mentally, I've identified. Now, I, can, I override this. I say, now, I don't want to see this anymore. I look at it. Now, I erase that one, and I don't feel that one anymore. There's the other one. This is five. And it matches the angle. Notice the oscillation here. Now, we look to see if there's another. So you don't disregard these two. And now I these two spüren. This is third, right here. Now, we take and place crystal here. Now, if the ley line is going in this direction, when I go through here, this will have stopped the field. Now I'm take it just a little bit further. Wenn die Richtung hierher ist, dann wird das Feld gestoppt. It will stop the field here and be nothing beyond that. So I will test that. Das Feld hier aufhören. Disregard this one. Und ich will das erste nicht spüren. There's this one here. The field is gone. Now, you lift the crystal up. Now put it down. Now, walk on the other side of the crystal. Could you pull it back in? The other side of the crystal. Yeah, right side. Because it's right in the middle. Oh, that's good. That's fine. Uh, that's good.
see? It works, doesn't it? It's fine. What? It's very fine. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the first time you have seen this? How many else have it? How many have seen this before? But this is doing now, there's an, beyond here, you're free, and here, you have the field. Yeah. But watch, if I don't put the crystal in the right location, it has no effect. So you realize what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Now watch. You take the crystal and just move it over here. What, just a few, a foot. Now test it again. If we're away from the force field, there is no effect. Now, what we are talking about is very precise, critical positioning and location. Now we just took the crystal and moved it over about the foot. Now there's no protection. What I'm going to do now I'm going to put in this crystal the thought that there will be a protection from the end of that wall to the end of this wall. Very easy, you can. Yes, man. Let me first. <laughs> I spoke about then 
was daylight. The crystal acts of itself with limited dimension. You can expand the dimension with mind. I think you can destroy all secondary effects of your radiation with crystal. No, it isn't. Please, anyone having Geiger counter, check your property first. Those of you who are farmers, it could be of immense benefit to your crops, to the food, and the like. And if this works, it will be one of the great blessings I can share with you. It is an antenna. And once you have set what you want to accomplish, it will work. Now, my recommendation is the following for nuclear fallout, which you experienced here from Chernobyl. Uh, Understand what a nuclear fallout is. In other words, what are you talking about here? What chemical are you dealing with? Get chemical analysis. Take this knowledge into your mind from what you read. Project the neutralization of these forces into the crystal. Put them in the corners of your property. This is property. Four corners again. Connect them. Draw your breath in and project the thought of love and protection. And then test. These type of radiations that you experience, I feel, are very commendable to release with the powers of your own mind. I feel also you can take a crystal, a natural crystal like this, put it over your food, pulse it with your breath with the thought of clearing and purifying. I can protect myself simply by thinking nothing can happen to me. And it all be the reverse. And well, people have problems. That is produ produce, producing a shield around you. Nothing can happen to me. I stand in a shield around myself. But it's not the same as when we're talking with the forces of nature, the radioactive fallout or a ley line. I would say I want to neutralize ley line, but I did not know what ley line is. There is no effect. I would appreciate it. If we can communicate with one another when I leave, what you would experience with the fallout that happened here, <clears throat> namely, those of you who have experience these effects. Let us see if we can neutralize these with crystals. It will be a great benefit to mankind, to you, and to the environment. Yeah, yeah crystal. In protecting right now, all I've talked about is the protection of crops, animals, vegetables, and the like that have been affected by the fallout. We saw discoloration in your leaves. I will bring some leaves tomorrow. We can all see. I don't know if there is enough radioactivity that we could measure with Geiger counter. We measured uh, about two weeks ago, 70 kilometers from Munich, uh, Volunda. Do you have Geiger counter or yourself? No, we were in a group and, and, and they had one. You see what I want is yeah. 
check with the Geiger counter, yeah. we put crystals around and see if the drop radiation drops. Now, to maintain balance or discipline in the body, every cell is a unit of life. Each cell broadcasts its tone and color, and if the tone gets disturbed by too much energy, there will be accelerated growth. If the growth grows too fast, the subject takes off independent of the body. Then we have tumors.